So back in 2006, I created a video titled Premature Deaths Caused by Smoking. And the way I started that video, as I was speaking on the, across the bottom of the screen, I started listing conditions and situations that people would consider major killers. Uh, the, what included in there was all accidents, all infectious diseases, all murders, all suicides, all diabetes, all cirrhosis, all AIDS. And I asked people then after seeing that list, where would they put smoking as far as a risk to, compared to these other conditions? Making a point that many people would put it at the middle of the list, many people would put it at the bottom of the list, and when the reality of the situation was understood, cigarettes killed more than everything on that list. The number that was estimated of Americans dying at that point in time, and these are based on over 10-year-old numbers basically now, was about 418,690 Americans were dying prematurely from smoking. That's what they were attributing to it. Now, in the interim 10 years now, the numbers are uh, have been estimated that about 437,000 Americans are dying every year from smoking. Well, in the New England Journal of Medicine today, there's a report out that those numbers were probably underestimated by around 17 percent that 60,000 more people need to be added to the list putting the number at close to 500,000 Americans dying every year from smoking the reason for the underestimation was there were conditions that they didn't realize smoking was a variable in and a risk factor for uh, some of the major ones that they're starting to see are renal conditions that they had not associated before, uh, intestinal ischemia that looked like it was a six-fold increase in people who smoke compared to non-smokers, uh, some cancers, some rare cancers that they hadn't associated before, uh, some more common cancers, uh, br breast and prostate were 30 and 40 percent higher in smokers than in non-smokers. Uh, there were a few other conditions that were on that list also, and I'll attach the study into the description here. And I, I just want to use this kind of an, uh, as an update to that original video, and so you can go look at that for detail. Uh, infections, that wasn't listed in there before, and uh, that they realized that certain infectious, respiratory infections are higher in uh, smokers now than in non-smokers. And what's real important about this is there may be people who had conditions, had problems that they may have done their internet research on and saw, well, smoking wasn't listed as a variable here or a risk factor. So they actually have these issues and they've disregarded their smoking as a factor because, again, it wasn't discussed before. So for those people, they really should be looking at this information and hopefully realizing that and using this information to help reinforce their resolve that they need to be reducing their risk of what they're already dealing with. And for people who don't have these conditions, again, it's recognizing how much we understand now. We've understood a lot, a lot. We've understood that, again, smoking has killed over half the people who d take it up end up dying from it. And it's just so crucial that people don't minimize the risk that their smoking is posing. It's important for young people not to take it up because they minimize that risk. And it's important for people who continue to smoke today to understand how dangerous the product this is. Because the more you understand that and the more you recognize the risk, hopefully the more motivated you will become to stop. And if, when you do, all you need to do to start to reduce these risks, to, again, get closer and closer to people who never smoke, the way to start that process and continue it is finally to make and then stick to a personal commitment to never take another puff.